Okay, so it's time to move our ETO integral beyond H2. So let me remind you that at the moment, the processes we know how to integrate are processes. So functions omega cross zero one uh, into the reals that are adapted and that satisfy you know the size condition that if I take the integral of the time interval and the expectation with respect to the probability variable of f and square that then this is finite right so what we're going to look at now is a larger class called l2 lock so what is l2 lock it's the set of all those processes that are adapted and now that satisfy that the integral from 0 to 1 of f omega t squared dt is finite for almost every omega. So it's almost surely L2 in time. So you can tell that this is a much weaker condition because here I'm only asking, you know, for almost every fixed omega, the integral of a time to be finite, whereas here I'm integrating over both time and omega. So I'm really taking the sum over all of those things uh, for little omega running through capital omega, and I'm asking for the entire sum to be finite as opposed to yeah, individual instances of these processes for in individual choices of the probability variable to be finite. So this is gonna be a much larger class than the H2 class. And the advantage of the L2 log class, and that's an important remark to be made here, is that if you have a function g from r to r, which is uh, continuous, then when you form the process defined by f of t equal g of b of bt, where bt is the Brownian, for all t in 0, uh, 1 here, I should take my 0, 1 probably closed, um, then what can I say about this process? I can definitely say that it is in L2 lock because the Brownian is uh, as almost surely continuous trajectory. So by almost sure continuity of the map T goes to BT of omega, right? So for almost every omega, this map is continuous. Uh, so we have that the supremum of all t of 0, 1 of g of b t of omega yeah, is finite almost surely and right, for almost every omega okay that's because the image of a um, compact set here by a continuous function has to be bounded Okay, but if it is bounded, then in particular, the integral from zero to one of g of b t of omega squared dt, let's uh, give a name to that soup, let's call it m, uh, is certainly gonna be smaller than m squared, uh, which is very much finite. Okay, so any continuous function of the Brownian is in L2 log, whereas, uh, as we've mentioned in a previous video, it's not in H2 in general, right? Just take g of x equal exponential x to the 4, for instance, and that would give you a continuous function of the Brownian, which doesn't give you an H2 process, but it still give you an L2 log process. So extending the Ito integral from H2 to L2 lock is going to be um, particularly helpful because we will be able to integrate any continuous function of the Brownian from that point onwards. So what we want is to define a Ito integral that goes from L2 lock to, you know, uh, let's say if we do it, we can do it process to process or we can do it process to variables if we integrate 0 to 1. So let's say to variables that should be such that uh, when f happens to be uh, a h2 process, then this extension of the e2 integral matches what we've seen before. So the question is, how do we extend, how do we construct this i tilde 
and define something that matches the Ito integral on H2 but works on all of L2 log. So to do that, we're going to introduce what we call a localizing sequence, a sequence of stopping time such that when I take a L2 log process and I stop it at such a stopping time, I get an H2 process. So here is the uh, key definition here. Uh, if I have an F in L2 log, I'm going to define tau n of F to be the infimum of those t such that the integral from 0 to t of f of uh, dot s, that's the dot representing the probability variable omega, is greater than n, right? So I'm stopping if the L2 integral of f omega s squared ds gets too large, or I'm stopping if I've reached the end of my time interval. Okay, so now what we need to prove is the following lemma that says that for every f in L2 log, the process fn, which is defined as f, uh, say defined at a point omega t as f of omega t times the uh, integral of 0 tau n f of omega of t so this process where i'm just uh, stopping my f whenever t gets above tau n uh, i'm claiming that this fn is going to be in h2 and here is the proof of that so okay uh it is clearly a adapted process because f itself was adapted and tau n uh, is a stopping time so um, so what we have here you know is still adapted as in for every t it is ft measurable because you know this this quantity here is ft measurable and then i take the inverse image uh, of an interval by that ft measurable uh, uh, variable so i get something in ft okay so it is adapted the question really is to know whether or not my fn is in l2 of omega cross zero one so let's compute that norm so what is that norm that is the integral from zero to one of the uh expectation or let's put the expectation on the other side uh, that is the expectation of f dot s squared and then i'm uh, stopping whenever tau n f is whenever t is above or s sorry is above tau n s so what is that well it, it really is the expectation of the integral from zero to well it's smaller than that than the integral up to tau n because my s has to be below tau n anyway and uh, uh, and tau n is either one or something below one of f of omega s squared ds but if i'm only integrating up to a time which is the infimum of those time for which the integral is uh, greater than n that means that this integral here has to be smaller than n and then i take the expectation of a fixed number n so i just get n so the l2 norm of fn l2 over omega cross zero one uh, squared has to be smaller than n so just fn belongs to h2 i should have said at the beginning i said it already that fn is adapted since f is okay so when i take an l2 log function and two log process and i stop that process at 
this tau n of f, I make it an H2 process. Now that suggests how I should extend the Ito integral, right? I should use this fn here to approximate my f in L2 log and show that a limit of the Ito integral does exist. And then that limit of the Ito integrals of the approximations of f will be, by definition, the Ito integral of f. But the key thing is to prove that this limit does exist. And that is the point of the next proposition. Let's have a look at it. Right, so here is where we are in the night at proposition 4.19. So we've defined this approximation of L2 log processes using this particular family of stopping time. So we're going to call a localizing sequence associated with F. And what we're about to prove now on this proposition is that the limit of the integral of those approximations Fn does exist. So if I have an F in L2 log, and I take the H2 approximation that has been defined in the above lemma, and I take Xtn to be their Ito integral as a process. So you have to remember that this is defined to be the unique continuous martingale that matches this integral, uh, this Ito integral for every t. Uh, then this family of continuous martingale as a limit which is a continuous process it may not be a martingale actually or it's only something that we call a local martingale but it's still going to be a continuous process and this continuous process is an almost sure limit of the xtn so that's what we need to do now we need to show that uh, almost sure limit of this ito process to process integral of the approximating fn does always exist let's do that so to prove this proposition, I'm first going to define a stopping time and omega to be the minimum. Actually, it doesn't matter if it's a stopping time or not, a random variable that uh, is the minimum of those n such that to nf of omega is equal to one, right? That means for that value, uh, capital N, of omega, you can integrate your L2 log process all the way to one and still get a finite inter integral. Now I'm claiming that this is going to be finite almost surely because if I look at the set of all those omega such that n of omega is plus infinity, okay, then what is, what is that set? Well, it certainly is a set where the integral from zero to one of f of omega s squared ds is infinite right because if n of omega is plus infinity that means that this integral here is greater than n for every natural number n therefore it has to be infinite yes okay but this set here has probability zero because f is in l2 log so f being in l2 log implies that n is capital N, this random variable capital N, is finite almost surely. Okay, that's good. Uh, on the other hand, we also have that the processes T goes to XTN, and let me remind you that XTN is the unique uh, continuous martingale set that is uh, matching the Ito integral of Fn uh, up to time uh, T. Okay, uh, so this is continuous almost surely. This continues almost surely. So now, all right, that means that there exists a set, let's call it A in sigma, that has probability uh, zero. So let's say more like this, for every n, there exists a set A n in sigma that has probability zero such that uh, for every omega not in a n t goes to x t n is continuous and then i can take a countable union of this set of probability zero i still have a set of probability zero i can take the union of that so the union of all the a n uh, let's call that a union the set where n is plus in capital n is plus infinity um, as probability zero. 
and for every omega not in that set that has probability zero two things happen one is that n of omega is finite and the other one is that t goes to xtn of omega is continuous okay so throwing away a set of measure zero i can assume that capital n is finite and that all of the xtn processes are continuous for every choice of omega outside of that set that has probability zero now that tells me how to define my limiting process i'm going to define xt of omega as xt capital n of omega of omega that's for every omega not in a and for every t in zero one and i claim that this is going to be uh, the continuous process that is a normal sure limit of the xtn okay so what do we need to show we need to show with that definition that the probability of the set of all those omegas for which the limit of xtn of omega is equal to xt capital n of omega of omega is one right one way this can happen is because xt little n of omega is equal to xt capital n of omega uh, for all little n greater than n of omega right so this probability of the set we care about right xt n of omega equal xt capital n of omega of omega uh, is certainly greater than the probability of uh, the following happening so the probability of the set of all omegas such that for every n greater than uh, capital n of omega then xt of n of omega is equal to xt capital n of omega for every t up to uh, this stopping time tau uh, tau n of f uh, which is actually one for all little n greater than capital n of omega all right because the um, the stopping time so tau n of f or n capital capital n of omega f of omega is one by definition of capital n of omega okay so what is that set well it's really a union of sets right uh, it's a union of these joint sets where capital n omega takes the value little m right? because these are all the values that capital n of omega can take uh, and remember that capital n of omega is finite almost surely so this is equal to the probability of the set of all those omega such that for all n such that two things happen such that first of all capital n of omega is equal to little m and for all n greater than m xtn is equal to xtm of omega you know for all t smaller than tau uh, m of f of omega which is also going to be one because little m is equal to capital n of omega so this is equal to this sum and now what i want to say is that actually this information here is redundant now why is that redundant because uh, up to the stopping time so that's the absolute key remark what i'm integrating the fn i'm integrating is uh, equal to fm for all n greater than m up to the stopping time tau n so what i have let's write it this way i have that the integral from zero to the stopping time tau m of f of s of f m of omega s is equal to up to that stopping time fn 
of omega s. That's for every, or almost every, omega in omega and s in 0, 1. Now, by the uniqueness theorem that we've proven in the previous video, uh, what have we got? We've got that x t omega of n has to be equal to x t m. So that's for every n greater than m. And here it's same for every n greater than m, x t n omega has to be x t m omega for almost every omega and for every t uh, that is below tau m of f of omega. Right, so this information here is actually redundant. You always, whenever t is smaller than tau m of f, uh, then this has to happen anyway by uniqueness. And what is that telling me? Well, it's telling me that the probability of the limit of x t n being x t, if n goes to infinity, is certainly greater than the sum m equals 0 to infinity of the probability of, well, uh, n of omega being equal to m. That's the sum of probabilities of disjoint sets. So this is really the probability of n being finite. And we've already seen that this probability is 1. And that completes the proof. Right. So this xtn tends to xt because it stabilizes. Because for n large enough, xtn has to be xtm. And that's really a consequence of the fact that for n large enough, the approximating processes uh, have to be equal. And then the uniqueness theorem that guarantees that the same is true up to that stopping time for the process, for the uh, integral of these approximating processes. All right, so now that we have proven this proposition 4.19, we have a definition for the Ito integral of an L2 log process. You just take the continuous process obtained as an almost sure limit of the xtn, where the xtn are these integrals of the approximating processes, where the approximating processes have been defined by stopping the L2 log process using this specific family of stopping time that I've called a localizing sequence. Now, okay, uh, the definition is going to be actually a little more general looking than that. We're going to say that given an L2 log process, um, if I have an increasing sequence of stopping time for which the process stopped at this increasing sequence of stopping time is in H2, and I know that uh, this stopping time eventually reached the end time. I keep taking capital T equal one in the videos just to simplify notation. Uh, so, and I know that almost surely this stopping time reached the end point of the interval. Then I'm going to call this family of stopping time a localizing sequence. And really uh, what I want to define as the limit of, as the L2, the integral, the to integral of the L2 log process is the limit of not just the Ito integral of the approximating sequence using the specific choice of localizing sequence that we've defined before, but using any localizing sequence. I want to show that the integral of an L2 log process is independent of the choice of approximation uh, by H2 processes using localizing sequence that I'm making, right? In the same way as when we define the integral of an H2 process, we showed that it was independent of the approximating sequence in H2 naught. So that is the point of the next proposition. I want to show that if I have an L2 log process and a localizing sequence for F in the sense of definition 4.20, and I define the Ito integral of the approximate process in the sense of Ito integral of H2 processes because the Fn tilde will be in H2. That's part of the definition of being a localizing sequence. Then uh, the, limit, the limit of this Xt tilde n 
processes will be the same as the limit of the XTN that we've used before. So the Ito integral of this L2 log process defined as in 4.19, right, defined as this XT for a specific choice of localizing sequence will be equal to the limit of this process obtained for any other choice of localizing sequence. That's going to be very practical later on because in order to compute the Ito integral of the L2 log process, often you want to manufacture a localizing sequence that is adapted to the problem you're looking at. So let's show this independence of the choice of localizing sequence now. So the proof of proposition 4.21. Okay, so this is reasonably easy to prove. We What we do is we look at both localizing sequences. So we have a localizing sequence mu n, right, is a localizing sequence. And we have the localizing sequence tau n of f, which is the one we used to define the Ito integral of our process, so IL2 log process in the first place. And now we're going to define a new uh, localizing sequence, or a new stopping time anyway, sigma n as the minimum, so sigma n of omega is defined as the minimum of mu n of omega and tau n f of omega for every omega in omega. Now, sigma n of omega being smaller than t, say, means that both nu n is, and tau n is smaller than t because nu n and tau n f are both stopping time, then sigma n has to be a stopping time too because the intersection of two things in a sigma algebra will still be uh, in the sigma algebra. But no, interestingly enough, if I have a t in 0, 1, well, let's call it an s, in 0, 1, and omega in omega such that um, s is smaller than sigma n of omega, that means that s is smaller than u n of omega and s is smaller than tau n f of omega. So the two approximating sequence f n, which is the approximating sequence where, sorry, I write things the other way, fn omega s, which is the approximating sequence stopped at tau nf, and fn tilde, which is the, the approximating uh, version of f where you stop at nu n, well, you know, you are before nu n and before tau n of f, so all of these things are equal and just equal to f omega s for such an s. Right, so fn and fn tilde are the same, but now by uniqueness, right, this difficult theorem that we've proved in the previous videos, this means that xtn has to be equal of omega, has to be equal to xt tilde n of omega uh, whenever t is smaller than sigma n of omega, and that's for every n. Right? If the process agree up to a stopping time, then the integrals of these processes have to agree up to that set, that same stopping time. So of course, if they agree, then their, their limits uh, have to be the same. So what we have is that for every omega, uh, w that is included in the set, uh, let's call it omega naught, the union of all those sets where sigma m is equal to one, right, what happens? So if you have an omega in that set, then that means that there exists an m for which sigma m is, is uh, sigma m of omega is smaller than one, is equal to one, and if sigma m of omega is equal to one, then of course t is smaller than sigma m of omega because t is always smaller than one, t is between zero and one. So for every omega in that set and for every t uh, in zero one, we just have that the limit of x t n of omega has to be equal to the limit of x t tilde n of omega as n goes to infinity.
right? because at some point that n will be greater than the m for which sigma m is equal to 1. So all we have to show really is that the probability of omega naught is 1. So we will have the almost sure equality of the limit of x t n and the limit of x t tilde of n. But what is omega naught? Omega naught is the set where the minimum of the two, uh, so this holds because, because sigma m is the minimum of the two stopping times uh, used as localizing sequences. So omega naught is really the union of m in n of the intersection of the set where tau m of f is 1 with the set where sigma m, sorry, where nu m is 1. Okay, so it's the intersection of these two things, but notice that the, so the probability of the union of over, over all m of the set where tau m of f is 1 is 1 because tau, tau m of f is a localizing sequence and then the probability of the union of m of the sets where nu m is 1 is also 1 and so the probability of omega naught which is the intersection of those two sets well is 1 minus the probability of the uh, so sorry the complement of omega naught is the union of the complement of this set and the complement of that set, but these are two sets of probability one, so they are complements of probability zero, and the union of two sets of probability zero has probability zero, and that proves that the probability of omega was one, which concludes the proof. So this proof of 4.21, and also the proof before of uh, um, uh, 4.19, they're not too difficult because we have this key technical tool that is the uniqueness theorem, right? If you look at this proof, you have sequences that stabilize, they equal after a certain value of n, therefore the limits have to be equal. Um, there's a little bit of uh, discussing on which set this happens, but essentially that's the idea. And that is not a very difficult idea. You have convergence of sequences that eventually stabilize. However, the trick in doing that is that we have the stabilization of the sequence of things we're integrating and we want to derive from that the stabilization of the sequence of their integrals and that is not an obvious uh, thing to do uh, abstractly this is a consequence of the uniqueness theorem that we can go from stabilization of the integrand to stabilization of the family of integrals all right, but that concludes the proof of 4.21. And we now have all of the tools to have a solid extension of our Ito integral 2L2 log process. We just take any localizing sequence, localize your process using this family of localizing sequences. This gives you a family Fn of H2 process, and it has an almost sure limit. And that limit is what we call the Ito integral of an L2 log process. And now that we have that, we're going to be able to derive a much nicer formula to compute the Ito integral of continuous functions of the Brownian, which are going to be the key objects we really want to study in the rest of the course.